This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the two faces of S Jam Boxing, Adam Morley and Shane Watson. How are you guys doing? All good, mate. You? I'm very good. You're too polite. Yeah, good, Danny. Good, Danny. Thanks. I'm great. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Shane, for asking. Adam never asks. Um, to start with you, Shane, how have things changed at S Jam for you since uh, Sam Jones departed to Pro Bellum? Uh, a lot of longer days, a lot of uh, later nights, but you know what? It's really good. Like um, I've got to do a lot more like travelling and stuff, uh, a lot more like decisions in fighters' careers and stuff like that. Um, helping a lot more on fight nights and stuff like that. It's been really good. Like for a lot more like I can I can do a lot more and I can like yeah make better decisions from my like from my point of view as well. So yeah, it's really good, really busy, but um, all round yeah, really good. What's the dynamic like now, Adam? I know I've probably asked you this before, but Shane's standing right next to you now, so it should be a bit more uncomfortable. Uh, since Sam left, and now you're working a lot more closely with Shane. It's good, Shane. Like, we've got a good relationship, close relationship. Just, we don't talk every day. I mean, I've probably talked to Sam a lot more, actually. I probably actually talk to Sam a lot more, where Shane and I just probably just communicate a bit more briefly. Um, he looks after certain fighters a bit more. I'll give him updates, but it's less. I think with Sam, I was giving him a lot of updates on a lot of different things, whereas with Shane it's just a bit quicker, a bit more to the point and we just probably get more stuff done. What's Adam's worst habit? Um, do you know what, I'd probably say, do you know what, answering his phone. Answering his phone, definitely answering his phone. Only to me though, not to everyone else, just to me. <laughs> not answering my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a bad habit. It can be bad when he answers his phone as well, yeah. Do not disturb, always, that's the problem. And you just ignore that. <laughs> Try to call him anyway, don't care. Now, we were talking off camera about Joe Joyce, and we'll talk about the Joseph Parker stuff in a minute, but there's been a lot of talk recently about him potentially being an interim fight for Anthony Joshua while he waits for Alexander Usyk, of course, who's got more pressing things to worry about in Ukraine. How realistic is that with different platforms and so on and so forth? I don't think it's the platforms that will stop it. I think when you have a fight, a big fight like that, I think platforms can come together. I think you've seen that. I think the issue is, I don't think it's the right fight for Anthony Joshua right now. I think AJ, well, we've got to see, it remains to be seen what happens with Usyk and what the WBO are going to do about that and whether Joshua's going to ask for permission to have an interim fight. But I just, for all the hype, I just don't think Joshua would, he just doesn't want Joe Joyce right now. I mean, no one wants Joe, but he doesn't want him now. He's got a new trainer. I'm, I'm sure he's got no interest. Way to promote it if it happens. <laughs> he's got no interest. <laughs> I don't think he's got an interest in this fight at this time. Joe will fight anyone. Joe's always had to fight anyone for Ian Lewis in his first fight. He has to fight whoever is given to him. So when I talk to Joe about Anthony Joshua, he's over the moon. Talk about Joe Parker, he's over the moon. But I think with AJ, his career has suffered a bit of a dip, losing to Ruiz, losing to Usyk. So they've got to carefully manage it. You put him in with Joe Joyce, difficult fight for AJ. I'm sure he'd admit that despite what he says on Twitter. It's a difficult fight doesn't want to take that risk right now. He wants to preserve himself for Usyk. So that's why it's not going to happen. If it did happen, it'd be massive and it'd be a brilliant fight. How would it go, Shane, if it did happen? Jo jo uh, Joshua was saying, what, first round KO just like in the amateurs. I mean, I've watched that. It was kind of three standing counts and you're out kind of thing. It wasn't like a unconscious uh, all over. But what, how would it go now? Uh, do you know what? They're I don't want to disrespect Adam Joshua because he's a two-time unified world heavyweight champion. He deserves a lot of respect. But I think... Going off of his new style, the way that he works now, I just feel like that would play in someone like Joe Joyce's hand. I think walking forward for t um, 12 rounds, a guy that like almost pitter patters with his punches now, and um, doing that against someone like Joe ain't going to work for 12 rounds. And I just think mentally, I feel like whenever a fight gets tough, he isn't that same kind of fighter. Like he used to get gritty. Like see, like in Klitschko, he really bit down his gum shield and let his hands go, and then stopped Klitschko in a very tough fight. I feel like that Danny Joshua doesn't really exist anymore. I feel like he just wants to try and outbox people, try and move to get the win, and he, he isn't actually the best at doing that. Um, and I just can see Joe getting uh, to, getting through him like late, mid to late rounds. I think Joe's um, boxing ability is really underrated as well, like his jab and whatnot. But it's a great fight. It's a massive 50-50 fight in my opinion, but it's, some, it's a fight that I'd uh, give Joe the slight edge over. Gritty Joshua no longer exists. Rest in peace, AJ. Um, how close are we then to Joe against Joseph Parker? Talking, I mean, we've been in a bit of a holding pattern for a few months, to be honest. Um, and I actually thought the fight probably wasn't going to get made. I'm actually going to go speak to Frank now. 
he's around, I think he's in there. I'm going to speak to Frank now. I think it's more realistic. I think people are getting more realistic about it. So I'd say it's realistic, certainly not signed, but we want Joe to fight in June, early to mid-June. And if we can't get it sorted quickly, he's going to have to fight someone else. And we've got someone else lined up. We've got another person lined up. Um, but we want the Parker fight. It's a meaningful fight. Joe's 36 years old, needs meaningful fights now. So we want that fight. Risky fight for him, Shane, given there's other options out there. Parker's got to be one of the top 10 heavyweights in the world, as Joe is. I think if you want to operate at elite level, they're all risky fights. So they've all weren't their, their right to be there. Parker's number two in WBO, Joe's number one. I think style-wise it could make for a good fight at some point in a fight as well. I think when you watch Parker against people like Chisora, he's allowed to have a break in between rounds all the time, whereas Joe's going to come at him all the time, they're not going to be allowed to have those breaks. He's seen similar issues with Parker in the past as well. It makes for a great fight, two big names, can sell out arenas, it's a, it's a great fight to make and I think Joe at this stage of his career, if he wants to go and be a world heavyweight champion, he needs to be fighting elite level fighters to then jump up to that next level where it's like super elite, where it's Joshua, whether it's uh, Fury, whether it's Usyk, that kind of level. Like you need to be beating people like Parker and beating them well to jump into them kind of fights as well. I mean, you've got to, you've got to respect Parker. I don't think has he ever been stopped. No. no, I mean, world champion never been stopped. It's a huge fight, and if Joe can, you know, show different levels to his game, I mean, I think what Joe does really, really well, he does one thing really, really, really to a high elite level, which is his engine. He's also got an elite level chin. So he's got those two things to a very elite level, and I think that will carry him through. Let's talk about a couple of your other fighters before I let you both go. I'm sure you're very busy. Uh, Lerone Richards, eye-catching stuff in his last couple of fights. What's next for him? Yeah, so Felix Sturm is fighting an IBO final eliminator in two weeks' time. So that's a, that's a real possibility, that fight, of him fighting Felix in a big stadium in Germany for the IBO world title. Um, Lerone wants to get a belt, uh, another belt, one of the more established ones, IBF, WBC, WBO. So we're looking at the IBF, we're talking to Frank and Eddie, we had a good meeting with Eddie Hearn the other day, and I think, you know, Lerone is very avoided, he's in the Who Wants Him club for sure, but I think with that Gongora win, he showed he is really elite, he's, I think he's the best 168 in England. Careful where you said that, weren't you? In England, Britain, the world? <laughs> yeah. Britain, in Britain. Once it's Florian Marku, maybe you want to say that one, Shane. He's uh, got Chris Jenkins, obviously. Big fight. Uh, what, what do you make of it? How do you size it up? Uh, I think it's a fight that Florian's ready for. Um, he's coming off a, a not uh, the most impressive performance against Zetto, but that was, that was problems in his camp and whatnot. He's got a new training setup now with Grant Smith, world level trainer. Got a great um, nutrition and strength conditioning on board with uh, Danny Wilson and whatnot. So, yeah, it's going really well for him. And I think Chris Jenkins is a good fight. He's coming off a decent win against um, Ndongo. It's, uh, I think, close to be made as a title defence for Florian as well, for an IBF international title defence. It's a good fight. It's the right stepping stone in Florian's career. He's got to be, he's another one that looks better when he fights people who, who are coming, like, bringing more to the table. Like, Proden, a lot went wrong tonight, but he still looked a lot better in that fight than he had done, for example, against like, Jamie Stewart. Same in like, Ryland Charlton as well. He needs that tiny bit of fear factor going to the fight. He knows that he needs to be at his best, otherwise he's going to lose. And he'll have that against Chris Jenkins again. And... Um, like Florian's got a great contract with Sky and whatnot, so he needs to be having good fights. And Chris Jenkins is a good fight. He get the fans talking. If Florian wants to move to that next stage where he wants these big fights and potentially down the road to be a pay per view star, he's got to be pe beating people like Chris Jenkins and beating them well as well. Now, just finally, you guys work across all the major promoters, all the major broadcasters. How do you manage to pull that off? How do you strike that balance where you're not seen as being too collaborative with one in particular? It's tough. I think it's tough. I think we're pretty unique amongst management companies for that. I think it, it tends to be the case with a management company where you have one or two boxes with a promoter, then you become friendly with them, so you naturally give your, your boxer to that promoter. We're probably more friendly with some than the others, but it's just, it's just kind of it's just kind of happened like that. I obviously am still a lawyer, but as a lawyer before, I was the lawyer for most of the promoters, so I knew them in that way. So yeah, we top rank, Sky, Ben Shalom, Matchroom, Frank. I mean, we don't have anyone with PBC. They're the only Fr Frank must love you. You're a lawyer, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, we, get, we get on well with all of them. I think we, there's a healthy... I don't think any of them like us in that way, but I don't think we're disliked. So we're just kind of in the middle with all of them. But the benefit is... I'm pro-bellum, of course, so I didn't, I didn't mention pro-bellum. Um, 
we've got uh, Darius with Pro Bellum looking to sign someone else with Pro Bellum actually someone international with Pro Bellum surely they like you seeing as Sam's there yeah do you know what I don't actually deal with Sam I deal with Harrison I deal with Harrison Sam yeah Harrison Whitman um, but yeah I do obviously talk to Sam but yeah Pro Bellum do like us Pro Bellum do like us not like Wham you kind of split and never speak no, to each other again <laughs> <laughs> it's not like Wham no, no, no. I mean, Darius Fulgham, for example, wants Sam Jones involved in his career, wants Sam Jones promoting him front and centre. You know, that's, the, that's what Sam's great at. So we will sign more with Pro Bellum. But again, someone said to me the other day, are you just going to sign everyone with Pro Bellum? It's like, no, it's like different, it's like horses for courses, different people. I think Florian's in the right place at Sky. I think it doesn't mean Sky are the best or Matchroom aren't the best or Frank's not the best. Who are the best? We're the best. <laughs> We're the best. Uh, Tommy today, Tommy Fletcher today, signing with Frank Warren. We spoke to a number of different promoters about him, but I think, you know, Frank can show in concrete terms what he's done with someone like Dubois, who didn't go to the Olympics, who is a hard-hitting heavyweight. Okay, Tommy's a cruiserweight, but it's a great blueprint. It's very attractive for someone like Tommy. And talking of Wham, as I was at least, um, why is it not S Wham, Shane? Why is it still S Jam? I'm just an employee, man. I ain't a shareholder. <laughs> I mean, one day if I ever get to become one, we might look at that. But uh, until then, no, no. Great stuff. Adam Morley, Shane Watson, really appreciate your time.